What's up guys, welcome back. Today we are taking a look at the basics of 3D. We're gonna take a look at how to make a cube and then we'll animate it using different gestures like the drag, the mouse move event and the scroll event. We'll take a look at how to do that using 3GS, frame of motion and Next.js. And after that, I'm pretty confident you'll have a decent idea on how to animate 3D objects. And as always, the live demo and the source code are both available in the description below. All right, so I have a basic Next.js application. I've created a cube component and I've imported it inside of the page.js. And the first thing I wanna do here is start by installing all the dependencies that I'm gonna need for this tutorial. So I'm going to open the terminal here. The first dependency we'll need here is React 3 Fiber. So we can go ahead here and install. It's at React 3 and then slash Fiber. And we'll also need the React 3 Dre. We'll need Firm Motion and Firm Motion 3D as well. And finally, we'll need SAS. The very first thing we need to initialize a 3D scene is a canvas. And then we can create an inner component. I'm gonna call it uh, cube and that cube function will be able to return here and I'm just going to return a mesh and the mesh here will be recognized by react 3 fiber because it's inside the canvas and so it will act as a 3js mesh and then the mesh need a geometry to create a cube we can have here a box geometry and if we save that we're going to have an error because all of this code is basically client side code and so it's going to trigger an error since we're in next.js and so the thing we need to do is make here our cube component a client side component by using the use client directive like this. And we see that we now have like a very small cube here. And now I'm gonna add some styling to make the canvas take the full height and the full width of the window. So inside of the page yes here, I have the main, I'm just gonna take it out here and I'm just gonna go directly here inside of the cube and I can import the styles here. And I can specify that it should have a height of 100 viewport height. And now we can see that our cube is now centered. This looks a bit better, but it's still a bit small for my own taste. And so what we can do here is go inside of the args. And here we can see that the args is asking for a width, a height, and a depth, which is basically the three sides of a cube, right? And so we could do one, one, one. And if we do that, it's the default. Nothing will change. And then I'm just going to boost it to like 2.5. And that should basically scale it by 2.5 and now we have like a much bigger cube which is kind of the size that I'm looking for here and now I can add a color to the cube so I can use here a mesh standard material and I can give it a color and I'm just gonna do like orange and if I save that I can see that I have a black cube and it's like why is it black if I put an orange color right the reason is our scene is black. It's like we're in like a cavern. So we need to create an ambient light and then I can have like an intensity and I can do like two and now I'll have some light inside of the cavern and I can see the color. And then I kind of want to see that we have a cube because right now it looks like a plane. It looks like a 2D plane. I'm not really sure what's going on. I'd like to see it as a cube. So what I'm going to do is make it rotate at every single frame just to see what's going on a bit more clearly. So what I can do here is import the use frame hook from React 3 Fiber, and I can initialize here the use frame hook. It's gonna give me two things, the state and the delta, and I can trigger a function here. And now this function will be called at every single frame. And then if I want to rotate my mesh, I can create here a mesh ref, and I'll use the use ref hook from React, and I can take it, go inside of the React here, and import the use ref, and then I can give the mesh as a reference here to the mesh. And now to rotate the cube at every single frame, I can do mesh, dot current dot rotation and I can access like the x axis and I can do plus equal the delta and I can like do multiply it by 0 0.1 just so that it's not rotating too fast and I'm just going to do the same thing for the other axis so the y axis and the z axis and if I save this I have the cube rotating I'm just going to make it a bit faster here and here we can see that we have a cube but since we have just an ambient light we don't have any shadows so it's kind of giving me a headache when I look at it it's like we, we don't really nicely see the 3d perspective so one thing we can do is add a directional light so I'm gonna add here a directional light and I can have a position and now when we want to start setting the positions of elements inside of the canvas it's important to understand the coordinate system so I have here the coordinate system of 3GS and we can see here that it uses a right-handed coordinate frame right and so we can see that the right-handed Cartesian here we have the Z pointing towards us the X to the right and Y up and so with that we can put the lighting at a proper place the first axis is the x and i can do like two so two is going to be on the right and then i have the y which is on top i can have like one and then the z is towards us so i can have like one to have it in front of us and i can save that and see what we have and we have a bit of a shadow here and so we can see that the, the light is like here 
and it's pointing down and giving a light here and a shadow on the other side, right? So now that's pretty good. It's helping us to understand like the 3D perspective here. And then there's one thing that's itching me. I can see that I'm scrolling here. So I'm just gonna go into globals, go inside of the body and specify that it should have a margin of zero pixels. And now I can see that I don't have the scrolling anymore. And the next thing I wanna do here is add a texture. An orange color is really fine, but I'd like to add an image. So here I have a bunch of different images and a red square. I'm just gonna take them here inside of the public folder. I'm gonna create an assets folder and I'm just gonna take this and put it inside. And now to load a texture, I need to import two methods. One is going to be from React 3 Fiber and it's going to be the use loader function. And that use loader is going to load another loader, which is the use texture. And now in 3GS, this use loader can use a bunch of different loaders. And so we need to choose the one that's right for us. And the one I'm gonna use for this tutorial is the texture loader. And I can import that from three source loaders and then texture loader. And then I can go here and I'm gonna create here a const texture one that's going to be equal to the use loader and I'm going to use the texture loader and I can go and I'm going to get here the color.png and then I can grab that texture and instead of having a color here I'm going to have a map and inside of the map here I can put the texture one and I'm going to save that and here I can see that that texture is being applied to every single faces of the cube so since it's red it's not the best example so I'm just going to change it to the one.jpg here and you're going to see what I mean let me do one.jpg and you're going to see that that texture is going to be repeated on every single face of the cube. And so that's something 3GS does automatically. And now what if we want a different image on every single face of the cube? It's gonna be very easy. Instead of having one, we're gonna have six. So I'm gonna do three, four, five, six. And then here, I'm just gonna copy paste as well. Two, three, four, five, six. And if I save this, we can see that it's not working. We only have the last texture here the last map is being applied to every single faces. And so to fix that problem, I'm gonna go here and use the attach props. And I'm gonna use the material zero like this. And this is kind of specifying that this is the material for a certain face and this is going to be the material for another face and we can do the same thing for the others. That way, we're basically telling 3GS, hey, use different textures for different faces. I can see here that I have a cube with a different texture on every single faces. And here we basically have our cube and our lighting, which is good. So we can go ahead and start animating everything using gestures. The first one I wanna do is the drag gestures and this is going to be by far the easiest. To do it, we can import something called the orbit controls from React 3 Drake. And this is super nice. We can actually just drop it inside of the canvas and we can save this. And if we try this, we can see that I can now move my cube around by dragging it. And what's nice is there's like a damping that's automatically applied. So like the cube is actually rotating in like a very smooth way, which is really nice. But there's a couple problem with that is uh, one thing is we can actually zoom in, which is maybe not what I want for this specific animation it could be nice if it was like maybe like a, an e-commerce and we want to like see the product closer or something like that but for this specific animation i don't really want to be able to zoom so what i can do here is go inside of the orbit control and say enabled zoom and i can just do false and now i can't zoom anymore but i can still move it around and there's another thing with the orbit controls that i don't want is if i use my right click of the mouse i can actually pan and like move the cube around like this which is also not something i want for this tutorial but you could want it for like a different case and so to remove it i'm just going to do enable pan and i'm going to do false and with that i have the simple drag animation and i've removed the zoom and the pan and now what i'd like to do is add a mouse move event gesture i basically want to be able to rotate the cube while moving my mouse around so i'm going to use frame motion for that i need a bunch of different hooks the first one i need is the use motion value and i'll also import the use spring and then i'll just remove the animation inside of the use frame hook and now my cube is like static again and then what i can create here is a mouse object and inside of the mouse object i'm gonna have a next value and i can have it as a motion value and i can have it equal to zero. Same thing for the Y, use motion value equal to zero. And then I'll grab a use effect hook. And inside of it, I'm going to initialize an event on the window. And I'm going to have the mouse move event, which is going to call a manage mouse move function. And here I can return a window dot remove event listener. And then I'm just going to declare that manage mouse move here. It takes an event. I can extract from that event the client X and the client Y from that event. And I'll also grab here the inner width and the inner height of the window. And then I can have here a target X 
or actually I'm just gonna call it x, which is going to be equal to the client x divided by the inner width. And same thing for the y axis, but this time for the inner height divided by the inner height. And now those two values will be a value between zero and one, depending on the position of our cursor, right? So if we are here on the x value, it's going to be zero. And if we are here, it's going to be one. On the y axis, if we are here, it's going to be zero. And if it's here, it's going to be one, right? And then we can simply use those values to set the mouse so we can do mouse.x and we can do set and we're going to set the x and then mouse.y.set and by the way that set function comes from the use motion value object given to us by frame motion so that's good now we can simply grab the mouse and we can go here inside of the mesh and we can have here a rotation y which is going to be equal to the mouse.x and then we can have a rotation x which is going to be equal to oh sorry mouse.x and for the y mouse.y and now this is a motion value so, so the mesh here won't be able to understand what the hell is a motion value so to make it understand we need to add here a motion in front of the mesh and now that motion we won't import it from the regular firmware motion package we're going to import it from the 3D package. So the frame motion 3D. And we can save this. And if we try this, we can see that we are now moving the cube with our mouse. There's a couple of things that are wrong here. My axes are in the wrong direction, which is for my personal taste. When I move on the Y axis, I'm actually rotating on the Y axis as well. But I'm actually going to reverse that. And so I can go here and reverse here. So the rotation X will be based on the Y position and the rotation Y will be based on the X position of the mouse. So yeah, that makes a bit more sense to me. And now there's another thing that's weird. If I have my mouse completely in the middle of the screen, the cube is like rotated. And that's because in the middle here on the X is 0.5 and on the Y is 0.5. So we give those values as a rotation. And by the way, the rotation values are in radians. And that's why we can use directly like 0.5 and 1 and all of that. But yeah, personally, I'd like to have in the middle here, no rotation. And so I'm just going to change those values here. And I'm going to add here a minus 0.5. And I'm going to add that value here, minus 0.5. And I'm going to add that value here as well for the Y axis. And now if my mouse is in the middle of the screen, there is no rotation applied to the cube, which is what I want. And now if I move left and right, I can see that I'm now moving my cube when I move the mouse. So that's really nice. But there's one other thing that I don't like is the animation is not smooth. It's like directly linked with the mouse right now, which is not that nice. Personally, I'd like to have it smooth, just like the orbit control is, right? If I move the orbit control, we can see that it's actually like smooth. But when I move the mouse, then it's like not smooth. So that's a bit of a problem for me. So what we can do simply, I'm going to wrap the motion value inside a U spring hook which is also from firm motion and the use spring will basically make that motion value smooth and here i'm going to create an option i can call it options and i can have a damping of 20 which is a value that i found is actually nice for this type of animation and i'm just going to add here the options for the use spring hook i can save that and i can see that when i move my mouse i'm actually moving the cube in a smooth way and then i have my orbit control and i can just move the cube around move it with my mouse as well. And now the last thing I want to take a look at is the scroll gesture, how to rotate that cube on scroll. This is like a very common animation that I see in a lot of awards winning websites. So it's worth it to take a look at it. There's actually two ways that I found that we can do this. So there's one way using a Dre package and the other way is using firm motion. We're going to take a look at the two and you can use the one you prefer depending on your case. So the first method of animating using the scroll is using the Dre package. And I'm going to import here the scroll controls, which is by far the easiest way of the two. I can grab the scroll controls and I'm going to put the scroll controls here inside of the canvas and I'm going to wrap everything inside of it and I'm going to save that. And here you can see that it added me like a scroll bar here that I can actually scroll and I can specify a number of pages and I can have like five pages. And here you can see that I have five pages worth of scroll, right? And one page is is equal to 100 viewport height. And now it's like, okay, I have a scroll, great, but my cube is still not rotating, still not moving on scroll. So what I can do to start animating it is I'm gonna go here in the React 3 Dre and I'm gonna import the use scroll hook. And then I'm gonna go in my cube here and I'm just gonna take off this for now just so we don't get confused. And I'm also gonna take off the options here for the damping. And now what I'm gonna have here is data that will come from the use scroll hook. And then I want to access that data at every single frame. So I can use the same hook that I used before, the use frame, and that use frame has the state and the delta as parameters. And then I can extract something from the data here, and I'm gonna extract the offset from the data given to us by the use scroll, right? And that use scroll is basically reading everything inside of the scroll controls here. And now that offset is a number 
between zero and one, depending on the progress of the scroll, right? So at the beginning here, it's going to be zero. And at the end here, it's going to be one. And so now that we know that, I'm just going to copy paste the code that we had here before for the rotation. And instead of doing plus equal, I'm just going to do equal to the offset. And then I can multiply the offset by five just to have like a proper rotation. And then I'm just going to take off this animation here, which was from the mouse move event. And I'm going to scroll that. And you can see that I'm rotating my cube on scroll. And there's also like a damping that's automatically applied. So that's really nice from the Dre package. And if I want to change that damping, I can go in the scroll controls here and change the damping and like put maybe 0.1. And here we can see that it kind of changed like the smoothness, right? But the default kind of was fine to me. So yeah, that would be one way of making an animation on scroll. But personally, even though it's a very easy way of doing it, it's not very adaptable. Like I can see some cases in like a real world context where that wouldn't be the best for me. So we're going to take a look at another way of making this using the frame emotion hook, the use scroll hook from frame emotion, which is in my opinion, a bit more versatile, even though it's going to be a bit more complicated. So I'm gonna take off the use scroll and the scroll controls here, take that off. Now I'm gonna take off this as well. And instead I'm going to import here the use scroll from frame emotion. And then the first thing I need here is a container ref, which is going to be equal to the use ref hook from React. And I'm gonna give the container here to the main. And now my main here, I can go inside of the styling and I can specify that it should have a height of 500 viewport height, which is basically like pages equal to five inside of the scroll controls that we had before. And then I'm gonna add another div inside of it. And I'm gonna call it the cube. And I can specify that that cube should be in position sticky with a top zero and a height of 100 viewport height. And I can save that. Same as before, I have now a scroll of five pages worth of scrolling and I have my 3D scene that's being sticky. And now I can use the use scroll hook from Frame Emotion and I'm gonna extract from it the scroll Y progress, which is going to be equal to the use scroll hook from Frame Emotion. And here I can give it a target, which is the container, meaning I want to track the scroll inside of the length of that container. And then I need to specify an offset. And here it's always a bit of a headache, but the offset here is going to be the start of the window and the start of the container, which is like the top position here. So I can do start, start. And then when do I want to stop tracking is like all the way at the end, which is here at the bottom of the window and the bottom of the container. So I can do end, end. And so now the scroll wide progress will be a value between zero and one at the top here being zero and at the bottom here being one. And now what I could do is pass that scroll wide progress to the cube here and I can call it progress. And now that cube has progress here and I can use it same as before. I have the rotation Y, which is going to be equal to the progress and the rotation X. I can do the same equal to the progress and I can save this. And if I try this, I can scroll and I can see that my cube is rotating on scroll. Now, a couple of problems. It's not rotating a lot and that's because I'm directly using the scroll Y progress here, which is a value between zero and one. And that's not enough of a rotation to have like a nice effect. And so what I need to do to transform that value, I cannot just go here and do like multiply by five because this doesn't make sense. The progress is a motion object. And so we can't multiply an object by five. This doesn't make sense. So to actually transform that progress and multiply it, we're gonna need to use the use transform hook from firm motion. And here I can basically transform and I can have a progress and I'm going to do the use transform and I'm going to transform the scroll wide progress, which is a value between zero and one. And I want to transform that value into a value between zero and five. And I can use that progress as the progress instead of directly using the scroll wide progress here. And if I try this, I can see that I have now more of a proper rotation. And so that's pretty good. But there's another problem is the animation is not smooth. A bit similar to the mouse move event problem that we had before, we can solve it very easily by having here a smooth progress. And I'm just gonna have the use spring of the progress. And then I can use that smooth progress for the progress here. And I can save that. And I have this. And if I scroll, I have my cube. Now you can see that there's like a sling slingy animation so I just need to change the options here I'm gonna have the same options here with the damping 20 I can go here in the use spring and I can add damping 20 just to modify that use spring value to have like a nice animation a nice smoothness and if we try this we have a rotation on scroll so yeah that basically concludes this tutorial we've seen a mouse move event a scroll event a drag event, and we've seen how to create a basic mesh with a texture. I hope you learned a lot. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.